Okay, so we're back in Photoshop with this MacBook that we created in the previous one. We've cut it out, we've put background in, we've put some gradients, we've used lots of different masks. Again, in the spirit of the last tutorial, what I want to do is reuse the selections, the masks I've already made. So I'm going to duplicate this previous MacBook, and in the copy, I'm going to right click on the layer mask and I'm going to hit apply layer mask. What that's going to do is effectively actually cut it out. Now, normally I wouldn't be doing this. Uh, I'm just doing it because what I'm going to do now is create the reflection as if we have a high gloss kind of surface that this is sat on. So I'm going to move that behind. I'm just going to name these so I know what they are. So that's my MacBook layer. And then here I've got a copy, but this is going to be called reflection. Okay. I'm just going to move this one down so it's below the MacBook. It's going to hold down Command or Control if you're on PC, Shift, and use the arrow keys to nudge it down. I want to move it down. I also probably want to move it below the shadow layer at some level. OK, and then I'm going to hit Edit and transform and free transform and what I've got here is because it's in perspective this gap looks a lot shorter than this one so I'm actually just going to pull this up a little bit to make it look more linear like that okay now I want to be able to cut out the underneath of this so I'm just temporarily going to hide the map book and its shadows and I'm going to use the quick select tool it's too sensitive so let's just change it to magic wand and still too sensitive uh, you know what let's not bother let's come in and do it the old school way so all I want is I just want this front edge I don't want to have too much on here. So I'm just going to come in and pretty much delete anything that doesn't quite belong on here. In fact, a cool way to do this is to use the layer mask in the first place, but since I've already started, I'm going to stick with what I've got here. mask that which is going to do the opposite of what I want and then I'm going to invert the mask like so so I've got basically that edge along the bottom come in and just check it I might want to smooth out a little bit So what I will need to do, bring back the laptop and let's drop shadows. Okay, is I will need to sort this bit out. Purely for the sake of time, I am going to leave that. You should be able to work out. Um, I'm going to actually apply the layer mask to this. Copy, paste. You should be able to yourself. I won't leave it. Let's just change it quickly. So I'm going to move this one up. I'm going to move this one down. Okay, and I'm just going to come in and erase Oops. some of these surrounding elements. Looks like it's a tiny bit too tall. So all I've done is flip it and I used Control T for transform. Um, and then I pinched the corners. 
So if you hold down the command key, you can pull in different corners, etc. This is what I used initially to get it into um, the roughly the right position. Now all I'm doing is obviously taking out anything that's standing out a bit from the original silhouette. So there's just a couple of little pieces on here that probably need a bit of modification. Just clean those up. I'm going to merge that down, which is merged down. Control, Control or Command D blends it onto the original reflection layer, and then just to be clever about it, let's just take this out because that's slightly set back, and it would show up on the reflection. It's effectively like a groove to put your finger in to lift the laptop lid. So I've got the basic reflection. Obviously, I don't want it on full strength, so I'm just going to knock it down a little bit so we can see it's reflected, but it's not too dominant. And again, if necessary, you can change it to luminosity so it takes on the color. It's entirely up to you. Um, luminosity that's without one slightly grayer the other one's slightly pinker it's personal taste really uh, so I'll make that maybe 30 percent now I do the same thing but this time with the screen so again I'm going to apply a layer mask I'm going to come in and I'm basically going to chop off all of this so then I'm going to do a quick one which is edit transform flip vertical flips upside down and bring it over here and control T and I want to pull it into sort of perspective like so again um, I will need to move this, the MacBook, the shadows and the reflection all up a bit because they're a bit low. In fact, there's a few other things that need to go. Let's just start again, all of them. Apart from the background, let's move them all together. Okay, just need to come in. that might have moved. Um, so I just need to tidy up some of these masks. Which uh, don't quite finish right. Okay. So there we go. Pretty much getting there. Just need that final screen. Uh, just need to hold down Control T. Just going to zoom out. Hold down the Command key in order to pinch the corners. I'm doing this kind of by eye. Not always the best way to do it. That generally works quite well for me. And I'm just getting a ballpark kind of area. Okay, what I did on the earlier version, um, normally obviously I'd want to mat out the screen again. So you know, can do that yourself. You can duplicate that, or you could have merged them before making a copy. Would have been the smart money, but for now. It's really hard to get these right for this time. Now I'm just going to put in my gradient.
Okay, so again, I want to move that behind and actually behind the reflection. So I'll call this screen reflection. Now you can see it through the side. So I'm going to hold down the command key, click on the reflection, um, click on the reflection thumbnail to select that area, click on the screen reflection, go to select inverse selection, and I'm going to mask that, which should mean it voids that area. Technically, you would need to go in and also take it out in this area, okay, because you can just about see it there. So it'd probably be wise to go in while you're at it Oops. and just delete that bit. So I have my screen reflected area and obviously I now need to dial that one down as well. Same percentage. Okay, so we're good for that. Um, looking good at the moment. Just save it. And next stage is to put the image on the screen. So I'm going to go up near the top. I'm going to create a new layer and call this screen. I'm going to switch over to another file that I've got here. I'm going to select the area I want to get. I just want this area pretty much. I'm going to hit copy, copy it to clipboard. Move back to my image here. We could paste it on and keep a flat reference of it. But now I'm going to use vanishing point. There are some slightly smarter ways of doing this. I might look at in the next tutorial or another tutorial. Uh, for now, I want to go up from filter to vanishing point, making sure you did create a new blank layer first. It's just warning me that the color mode of the thing I've copied is different to the one in the document. So I'm going to zoom in up to my screen area and I'm use this grid tool and I'm going to click in the corners of my display now if in doubt with this particular situation make it fractionally bigger and then we can trim it down and mask it later okay so I just click in the corners you can always adjust any of these so if you didn't get them right first time pin them right get them in then I'm going to hit control or command V, depending if you're on Mac or PC, to paste. Okay, let's zoom out for a second. So it's pasted in my screen grab. I'm going to switch here to the transform tools, control T on the shortcut, or you can just click it. Hold down shift to keep it level. I'm just going to make it a bit smaller. This is my tip. Don't start with it massive. If it's really huge, can't click cancel, go out and do it again. Um, resize it elsewhere. Okay. But the reason I don't want it too big is when I drag it on here, it's going to snap. If it's too big, I won't be able to see the edges and I'll be forever having to move it around to try and find them. So I'm going to push it roughly up into the top corner here. And then I'm going to grab this corner and hold shift. I'm just going to stretch it out a bit. Um, in this case, normally I wouldn't want to distort anything. That's why I'm keeping the shift key down. But in this case, for a few pixels, I'm just going to pull down a tiny bit. When I'm relatively happy I've covered that area, I'm going to hit OK. <coughs> and what that's going to do is on that separate layer that I created, it's going to create a mock-up of that screen. OK, so you can see it now looks roughly like it's on the screen. Um, again, because we already did do the screen area earlier, I can select that and to be just completely sure, I can mask like so. And then the final touch is I can take that screen area, create a new layer, put in a mask, and I can do something like if I change the layer mode to screen, let's go, yeah, screen, and I take a white brush, I can actually sort of paint, excuse me, I need to be on the right layer, I can paint into the layer little highlights of sheen and things like that, okay. Uh, let's take this down a bit. 